Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and welcome to another episode of Deep Web Browsing, Dank Web Browsing, Dark Web Browsing. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with episode number 134. I have to check the archive there for a second. But what is the theme for today, ladies and gentlemen? I got some sites here, but as always, we'll be uh, browsing through and uh, going through our very first websites and uh, seeing just what the theme becomes to by the end of the episode, ladies and gentlemen. So let me get this cringy intro out of the way and get to the very first website. So ladies and gentlemen, I feel like I have shown this site to you uh, before, but this is Gold and Diamonds, ladies and gentlemen, operating right at you from the African continent, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, rainbow land as they like to claim it. Now, I don't know if this is exactly real or not, or if it's whatever, but I, I almost feel like I have shown this to you before because I've seen the same, I've definitely seen Africa pop in twice, but there are people here selling diamonds and stuff. I feel like I've shown this, but at the same time, you can't really blame me because like a lot of these sites use the WordPress uh, format as well too, but this is a site that just popped up not too long ago, ladies and gentlemen, it actually literally popped up about an hour into me. Like, I looked through all the crawlers, this site popped up. So, even if I might have shown this, it's definitely a site that has re-sparked and probably retouched upon. So, it might be interesting to see. Now, over here, they've got the prices of a lot of diamonds that they're selling, nuggets and uh, gold bars, gold nuggets, carrot diamonds, and whatnot. Now, I haven't seen these photos before, but they definitely seem to, I guess, be somewhat legitimate because they got their watermark alongside with the two general stuff that you see on the deep web anyways. They've got a forum page where uh, it's not really a forum page. It's more so just a comment section, ladies and gentlemen. So if you go to the About Us section, our company Gold and Diamonds sell discounted diamonds, golds, rhino horns sourced from Africa. We we're able to offer these products for steep discounts because we do not abide by international labor standards. Okay, that's already coming off the... Now you can see why it's on the deep web. It's going off the most sketchiest uh, principle ever. To be truthful, we feed, clothe, and house our workers, but we do not pay them wages. Motherfucker, that's slavery. Okay, I don't care what you say, that shit is fucking slavery, motherfucker. <laughs> what the fuck? Many companies have been found guilty of knowingly profiting from sweatshops, child labor, slavery, unsafe working conditions, unfair wages, and violence. The companies included, but are not limited to... Uh, Pfizer, Pfizer, I think it's pronounced F Fizzer, F Pfizer, F something, okay, it's late. Walmart, oh, damn, Nestle, uh, Coca-Cola, Nike, Adidas, H&M, Levi Strauss, Levi Strauss, God, I can't fucking pronounce it, C&A, Walt Disney, and Otto Verstand. Ladies and gentlemen, if you uh, belong to any of these companies, you're apparently, and this is all out, none of this stuff comes out of my mouth. These are golden diamonds from the rainbow land in Africa alleging that these companies do what they do. We believe we are cut above these companies for the following reasons. Golden Diamond brings the profit directly to the individuals, you instead of corporations. But what what about the people that you don't pay? Like, what the fuck? You feed, clothe, and house them. It certainly can't be a fucking two-way street. I'm pretty sure these motherfuckers, I mean, I guess, it, I guess if it depends, like if they're in the poor section of Africa or something, food and, you know, basic amenities are payment enough, right? I mean, again, we don't know, like, it's not like, they, they, it's not, I don't assume they have a gun to these people's head, but like, you know, if it's like food, clothing and housing them, but they can't leave the premises and shit. Like, have you ever heard of like legalized slavery or something? Um, one of the big places where I guess the biggest legalized slavery could kind of happen I think it actually does really happen. I haven't been there forever. Is like a uh, fucking Dubai and shit. If you don't know, like a lot of Indians go over there, like NRIs or whatever they want to call them. Uh, they 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 surrender their passports and shit, and they work for these like Dubai companies and stuff. And they live in like fucking hovels, and they have to like sort of earn back their passports and shit before they can go back to like India or Pakistan or fucking Bangladesh, wherever they fucking get out of. You know what I mean? So, again, you know, it's very simple that we encourage our managers and suppliers to be ethical when it doesn't interfere with profits. Ethical when it doesn't interfere with profits. Dude, what the fuck? Your purchases bring revenue back to African cities, towns, and va uh, villages. Well, how does that work? Because you obviously take the money, but you say the profit comes to me. There's so many contradictions in here. I don't know what the fuck to say. We look forward to future business dealings, administrator, gold and diamonds. Okay, I definitely haven't shown you this website before because if I did, I would definitely remember finding a fucking slavery website on the fucking internet because that's what it is, all right? Just because you're fucking self-aware and you can say, yeah, we abuse it and you don't hide it doesn't make you any better than the people you're criticizing, just fucking saying. 
To Bitcoin, we only accept Bitcoin payment. We recommend only using ClearNet Bitcoin wallets or a ClearNet wallet like blockchain.info created and accessed from Tor only. Anonymous payments. Yeah, obviously you want to be anonymous if you're buying fucking conflict jewelry, right? Like, I'm pretty sure... I don't know if buying, like, gold and diamond and, you know, stuff... Well, I'm pretty sure buying ivory stuff is illegal, right? Because uh, the rhino is considered, like, endangered. Or at least that's, like, fucking poaching. You don't want to be responsible for that shit. So you probably want to fucking, you know, go through an anonymous payment so you don't come back to profiting or making money or giving money to support this kind of shit. It's like buying oil from ISIS, dude. The shit don't fly by. Even if you're saving 30%, you're... You're, you're, lo you're losing 70% of your rectum in a federal penitentiary, okay? It's, the trade-offs don't matter, people, all right? Let's be fucking real here. So selling diamonds. We believe at least 50% of jewelers are either currently involved in unethical fi fiances, fiance, fi or crime, or want to get involved. Your best shot is with jewelers. For new buyers, we recommend buying three diamonds and selling one diamond at three different jewelers. Don't sell it unless you can talk to the head manager. If you can't sell it to the guy in charge inside his office, do not sell. All you have to do is say, how interested would you be if I could bring you more diamonds? You always want to suggest you can bring more business. Never make explicit statements. You are looking for a manager that perks up at your comment. He recognizes your potential for profit. Let him make the offer. And he will. You are the rare commodity. Jewelers are very common. We have heard of managers open their safe and put thirty to $100,000 on the table cash and say, I will buy every diamond you bring me for whatever value you cash, no paperwork. You are looking for a manager like this. You will find one more easily than you will believe. Regardless of what percent he offers, we recommend accepting it and selling the diamond. Next time, bring two diamonds, show them to him and say, I'm not pleased with the profit margin and I found another buyer. If he doesn't accept it, leave and come back next week. These are greed-driven men. You are bringing them easy money. My God, the walking contradictions here, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, they will accommodate you. Once you find a few jewelers you like, stick with them. As a rule, we never suggest selling more than $50,000 worth of diamond to one jeweler. Never sell more than once a week. Never less than once a month. Only accept cash. If no cash, leave. Always mention that you'll be back. If you say, this is my last time, you fucker, you risk having them send someone after you for the cash. <laughs> what? What, send a fucking assassin after your ass? Always walk there and take a very long route and watch for people following you. It almost never happens, but you don't want the risk. You should be able to get 50% spot value for these diamonds. You could also get more, but this is the sweet spot we feel. You want the managers to love you for the money. But you also want maximum money yourself, so don't get fucked over. Uh, so basically, they want you to buy these conflict diamonds. I'm pretty sure these aren't even, like, real fucking, well... I mean, a diamond is a real diamond. It might just be, like, an artificial-esque diamond. Like, they might have made it through, like, pressuring, um, like, applying so much pressure that carbon turns into diamond itself. I don't know, dude. Whatever it is, this is some fucking shady-ass shit, motherfucker. What is this? Are you guys for real? Are you still in operation? Don't risk getting caught in jail time with counterfeit cards. Buy our gold and diamonds and resell them for big profit safely. What type of profit can I make from your product? What, why can you why can you sell your product so cheap? Our employees were, were given no further compensation. We were able to gather and sell our product so cheap because the manpower we use costs close to nothing. Of course, slavery. All right, let's let's, let's not beat around the bush and call it you know uh, accommodated working. No, it's slavery. All right, that's what slavery, motherfucker. Uh, free samples is a business, not a charity. Savage as fuck. Diamonds AIG certified. All right, at this point, I don't fucking figure it out. But ladies and gentlemen, they've got a Proton mail address. If you want to ask them, by all means, it's right there. But we have a Golden Diamonds from the Rainbow Land in Africa profiting off of fucking slavery. For, this is slavery, ladies and gentlemen, but let me get off and uh, get the fuck out of here and go to a different, more ethical website, man. Can we just get an assassin, please? God damn it. One fucking assassin, all right? That's at least more ethical. Okay, so this is Hitman Connect. You can always trust us with carrying out dirty operation in a clean way. These, are, these guys are the fucking clean saints of the of the Hitman. You know, it's been a while since I've seen a Hitman site, man. Give me... I love finding me some motherfucking Hitman sites, dude. God damn it. Hitman Connect is an undercover assassin organization with well-trained, fine, rookie... <laughs> I don't, I don't, you gotta, why you gotta toss rugged in there? Ooh, 
We take jobs from different parts of the world, and our guys are dedicated to the course and will go to any length to carry out their assigned tasks. May I also say how fucking amazing it is. God, just how amazing it is to have trial watermarked and have this fucking great-ass Grim Reaper shot. I love it. I don't want to risk if they're actual assassins, though. I'm not going to fucking bother. Our agents will have a masked identity and would carry out their hit, leaving no trace and records behind. We are good at tracking our victims and offer various forms of services depending on what our clients want. Aside terminating lies, we also offer kidnapping services and severe torture to the targets and many other services. We only accept hit from people who are serious and willing to follow our terms and conditions. All you just have to do is give us what we need, and we make proper survey on the victim and carry out your operation clean and clear to your satisfaction. The services we provide are below at their respective prices. Okay, so let's see the fucking list of services. I love the, I love reading this shit. So you've got assassinations or shots, sharpshooters, snipers, or guns, 15 grand to 25 grand, a knife attack is 20 to 30 grand. Motherfucker, why not just... That's such a weird pricing. Poison attacks are 35 to 45 grand, and severe totewer to death is a 45 grand payment, dude. Next is the wreck a life feature, okay? Some services have this, most don't, but let's see wrecking a life. Uh, bio attack, 4 to 10 grand. Okay, first of all, bio attack, motherfucker, we went Resident Evil up in this bitch. Paralyzing, uh, I mean, I've heard of paralyzing, but not. Par- paralyzing must be the fucking scary equivalent to that, dude. Jesus. Three to eight grand. So a fucking bioterrorist attack? Well, I guess that makes sense. A little more expensive. Yeah, okay, I can see that. I can see it. Depriving of vision, nine grand. Brutal attacks, 15 grand. What the fuck is a brutal attack, dude? Now, other hit attacks is tutor. Okay, I'm pretty sure tutor is like a different way to say it in another language because there's no way you can make the same fucking typo this many times and have it so legit. Like, it's literally capital. It's perfect. Totur is a $10,000 uh, thing. Okay, well, wh- shouldn't it be at least 20 fucking grand? Like, why are you charging me 35000 extra for the death part? Okay, motherfucker, that makes no sense. Even when there's packages to kill a guy with, like, poison attacks and, like, like, the fuck is this pricing scheme, dude? Come on now, we need an accountant for this. Kidnapping is five to, again, kidnapping is spelled the same way, Jesus Christ. Kidnapping is five to 15 grand. I assume the range is if you're, depending on how long you keep the target kidnapped. And a beating is a two grand. That's a fucking expensive beating, dude. That motherfucker better have the Jesus slapped out of him if, if I'm paying two grand. That's for damn sure. Now, you go to the contact us section, and it, it's uh, if you look over here, they got a perfect mail. Hit connect at uh, protonmail.com. That's a perfect way for you to contact the FBI that's honeypotting this. But according to Cicero Assassination of... Oh, you need to quote shit. Our services are open to those who are interested in hiring any of the services we provide. You can send us an email. You can go talk better on how the operation would be carried out. Oh, we can talk better. And then assign a fine and rugged... Why the fuck are you mentioning rugged, dude? It's such a weird way. Such a weird... Capable to carry out the op. Our payment method is fair at both sides, and we make sure our clients get full satisfaction from their job. We accept part payment of the percentage. Okay, it's not all at once. They want 55% before the op and 45% post-operation. Okay, that that makes sense. You know, that, that, that makes... Makes a fair amount of sense. We also accept a reliable escrow service and agreed from both sides. Payment is always in Bitcoin. So they agree with an escrow service, which is the third party that handles payment upon completion. That, see, like, see, like they, they offer things that are fucking reasonable. Like, I mean, if, if you ever want I guess if you ever wanted somebody to, again, please don't buy Hitman services. But if you ever wanted to, you know, I guess, partake in such a deed, these guys probably seem the most legit out of it. Now, unfortunately, I don't really see... A, uh, a, a list of hitmen to hire from, which is kind of the shady part. I mean, I would love to know who the fuck, it, what fine and rugged individuals are available for this job. I mean, do they got some names like Pony or fucking, you know, Snake or some shit like that? I don't know, dude. But uh, that being said, I'm probably going to get my head shot off at some point by making fun of an actual hitman. So I'm going to back out of this and pray, pray to God that my life is still intact. Let's go somewhere else. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we have a 30-minute near video from the Dank Web. I cannot believe, usually the average is about 45 seconds, but we have hit 30 minutes, ladies and gents. So that being said, I don't know much more to really say about it. In this case, we're not going to watch the whole video, I guess. 
I mean, we could, depending on how fucking interesting it is, but there's no way I'm sitting over here watching a 30-minute fucking deep web art project. Let me tell you that much. Let's hit play and pause. What the (laughs) fuck? Ladies and gents, already, first time it's happened. Before we've hit five seconds, I know exactly what the fuck we're seeing. So for those of you who who are who are unaware of what we're watching, um, this is Petscop. As it? far as I know, this isn't a video that I know too much about. Um, I I haven't even done the Petscop in a while. For those of you who don't know, I have a haunted gaming video up about the whole Petscop uh, deal, right? Where I t- where I talked about the story. I've I've covered it. Basically, what this is is it is an arc. If I can actually pull up the Petscop page, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Petscop page real quick. The Petscop is a channel on YouTube that actually covers, um, I guess you could say it actually, it actually just straight up covers a lot of the, uh, well, what am I saying cover? Basically, I'm, I'm getting my words confused. Petscop is a PS1, um, art game. Basically it's a game that doesn't exist. Um, an individual created this game and they've essentially ran it through. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the channel page, and as far as I can tell, they actually have a three-week, two-week videos away, so, oh, god damn, dude, it's, um, they've updated the arc since I made it, but when I covered this arg, ladies and gentlemen, um, I made a haunted gaming video on it, I covered this alternate reality game, I looked at it with all of my, uh, fervor and being, and it is a pretty interesting, creepy PS1 arg that exists, but in all reality, I guess you could say it is an art project, but it isn't a deep web art project. I think somebody just re-uploaded this shit. But this, I don't recognize from anything else. Like, okay, this is fucking new. A calendar system? So it's got to be the new videos that were posted. It's got to be this one, because that's like 29 minutes. This one is... Yeah, twenty. Yeah, it's that video in its entirety that was reposted. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's like a calendar they put into the fucking thing. And they covered, yeah, no, exactly. Uh, it's the Petscop ARG video. What the fuck? They literally, okay, all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Petscop ARG. There's really nothing much more else that I could really say about this. The ARG is really goddamn great. As you can see, it looks pretty much like a PS1 game, not just in the looks of it, but even down to the fourth wall breaking segments, like resolutions recorded and all that stuff. Now, I could sit here and gush about how pretty and awesome this ARG is. What? But, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, it's got, like, a narrator to the entire situation as well. So, yeah, it's, uh, I guess you could say an evolution of what the Ben Drowned ARG essentially had become. You've got Cot, Care A, all this stuff, Rainmaker. Um, but, yeah, no, this is an ARG based upon a pretty weird um, rebirthing thing. Uh, or I get not based around, but that at least what it was theorized as. But I guess it's now Deep Web Official by having one of its newer releases, which was three weeks ago, so ample time to re-upload and recode this video, I guess you could say, for the Tor Network. Um, It has another video past this one two weeks ago loaded. So yeah, I guess, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what the Petscop ARG is, I guess it's a good way to check it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, For those of you who haven't checked it, go to to the Petscop channel. It's P-E-T-S-C-O-P. And you can check out the channel and all of its videos in entirety. I actually have a haunted gaming video I made on it where I covered the subject. So you should check it out as well. There's another channel, Pyrocynical, that actually has, in my opinion, the best Petscop video that exists. So you should probably check that one out there as well. But yeah, I guess now it's a deep web official, ladies and gentlemen. So no weird art project, but we've got a weird gaming art project, ladies and gentlemen, so I guess it's the second time I've seen an ARG. First time, not too long ago, we saw the Ben Drowned ARG on the uh, deep web, and now we've seen Petscop, so shit's coming in full circle, ladies and gentlemen. I kind of like it. I like it when everything combines on my gaming channel, deep web, haunted gaming, and (laughs) gaming ARGs. It's cute, dude, but let's get out of this and uh, go to something else. So this is a new lad that popped up, X Hacker. Sometimes I like reading these resumes that pop up. This is a fresh new website. Literally, I found this one like two days ago and archived it. But this is X Hackers. He's an independent security researcher, hacking and social engineering. Let me actually fucking blow this up a little bit. Uh, hacking and social engineering is my business since I was 16 years old. I've never had a real job, so I had the time to get really good at this because I've spent the half of my life studying and researching about hacking, engineering, and web technologies. I have worked for other people before in Silk Road. Oh, that's pretty cool. So for those of you who don't know about the Silk Road, the Silk Road was like the thing that I don't want to say put the deep web on the map, but it was one of the big things, like, 
people knew about the deep web. Um, the Silk Road was this online marketplace where uh, you could buy and sell drugs and various services all through bitcoins, and it was pretty anonymous. It was like the Amazon of illicit services, right? And at the time, I guess it was probably the safest place to buy marijuana from instead of dealing with, like, some fucking shady method-out dealer. In real life, you could just go over there and, like, fucking buy your pot pretty uh, carefree, I guess you could say. Now, the reality of this is is that as time had went on, you know, the Silk Road was taken down. The FBI launched an investigation into it and took out the Silk Road uh, owner, right? They took out the entire website. Now, I don't know why the FBI did it. I, I read somewhere that it was like a fucking, the dude hired a hitman or some shit like that. And the feds used that to basically indict the guy and take him out that way. It was a weird story. I don't even know if that's how it went down, but I heard that from somewhere. I never really looked into it, but the Silk Road went down yeah, I think it came back as Silk Road 2, and I think now a Silk Road 3 exists. But the thing is, the Silk Road legacy is over. This you, this dude's been around for a while. It was a place to do illicit services. And now I'm also offering my services for anyone with enough cash here. So, prices. Let's see the fucking prices here. I'm not doing this to make a few bucks here and there. This is not some shit of Eastern European country who is ha- Ho oh, ho ho! Jeez, man. God damn. Fucking chill with the- <laughs> Jeez, who is happy to scam people for 50 euros? I'm a professor, so I can already assume this guy's from like the UK or, or Russia or something like that, or in the European section of the world because of the currency denomination. I'm a professional computer expert who could earn 50 to 100 euro an hour with a legal job. So stop reading if you don't have a serious problem worth spending some cash at. Prices depend a lot of the pro prices depend a lot of the problem you want me to solve, but the minimum amount. Uh, for smaller jobs is 200 euro. You can pay me anonymously using Bitcoin. Everyone uses Bitcoin, dude. Technical skills. So he has a lot of web skills. He learns HTML, PHP, SQL, Apache, C, C++, Java, JavaScript, Python, pretty profession in coding. Zero-day exploits. For those of you who don't know what a zero-day exploit is, it's like an exploit that people have discovered, never leaked yet. It's very fucking common. Like, a zero, as far as I know, a zero-day exploit for an iPhone can go up to, like, I think it's like 2 million bounty or some shit like that. And the only reason is because since the exploit hasn't been located by Apple or anybody, they can abuse an iPhone and gather personal data or use a backdoor exploit to abuse the system as much as it can before it's patched. Um, highly personalized Trojans, bots, DDoS attacks. DDoS is like taking out routers and shit with ping requests. Um, bots, uh, as far as I know, it's creating a botnet by creating slave networks and running them through a master. But anyways, fear phishing attacks to get passwords from selected targets. Um, that's, that's like, that's like sending you like one of those spam emails, like uh, PayPal detected a weird balance. Please enter your information and sign, please sign in to see if, uh, th there isn't a problem and you sign into some bullshit website they've set up and they've got your information, uh, as far as they got hacking, web technologies, all that good stuff. Social engineering, which is nice. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's like, uh, Kevin Mitnick's claim to fame. Social engineering is like basically the art of lying, uh, specifically to, like, a customer service representative, right, and getting, like, fucking sensitive information out of them and shit. Yeah, here, listen, our natural weakness as humans can be exploited many, many times, much more easily than those of software or hardware. Social engineering does it, exploits our psychological weakness to extract information. Yeah, basically. Um, and it can happen almost anywhere, dude. Well, what'll I do for money? I, I'll do anything for money. I'm not a pussy. <laughs> if you want me to perform some illegal shit or work against government targets, I'll do it. So if I gave you half a million, would you try to hack the Pentagon? That would be a fucking story, dude. Hundred grand, hack the Pentagon. Would it be a would it be a viable fee? I don't know. You you tell me. Would you hack the Pentagon for a hundred grand? Uh, don't. You'll get found out, and they'll send you to. Don't don't believe the stories. We'll give you a job. They'll take you to a prison, dude, and they will fuck you till till you're dead. Hacking web servers, computers, and smartphones, malware development for any operating system, economic espionage and corporate espionage, getting private information with someone, change grades in schools and universities, password recovery, and much more. All right, dude. Economic, corporate espionage. It's all like the fantasy stuff you see in like Uplink. All of this, you do in that game Uplink, Hacker Elite, man. If you don't know about that game, look that shit up. It is fly as a motherfucker. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is X Hacker, the man who will hack the Pentagon if you pay if you pay enough. Uh, I don't know if it's a man or whatever. I'm being very very sexist here. Uh, the person, <laughs> this person will hack anybody. Okay, so if you want to hack the North Koreans, 
X hackers your lad. You hearing that FBI, ATF, whatever? Find this lad, pay him enough, and Kim Jong uh, Kim Jong Un, I think it's Un Un's military secrets will be fucking had for days. Let's go to something else, man. This is kill me, dude. Jesus. All right. So so here we got sort of a darker aspect. And I sometimes look at some fun stuff, but the uncensored hidden wiki sometimes catalogs a lot of uh, newer things that sort of pop up. Um, here and there on, uh, on the dank web, that's a little too dark. I know there's been a lot of people who are like, the deep web has a lot of pedophilia stuff on it as well, which is true, but this is one such story we're going to look at. This is one that I didn't even know of, so I guess we'll kind of read it, um, as a group together. It's pretty dark, so skip over it if, if, if you don't want to, if you don't want to do it, but let's look at it. Vicky, real name, uh, I'm gonna, I'm not even going to mention the real name, there's no need to have that, is probably the best known... Oh, God, dude. Between the age of 9, 11, 12, she was involved in 14 full-length videos, which were kept basically whole, which was very rare given these videos were done in 1991 to 2001, known for wearing uh, lingerie, a few videos involving her talking about, you know, genitalia. Most are mixed between her giving uh, her dad, oh, Jesus Christ, attempt to penetrate, oh, my Lord, what in the flying fuck, dude? So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, apparently these videos did exist at one point, because as far as I know, the Uncensored Hidden Wiki basically is, to be honest, somewhat fucking legitimate, dude, so what the fuck, but apparently what's really fucking weird to read over here is, uh, so over here, the video is hidden, so it's unknown if this girl also featured, or just a friend of hers, There's also a few of her and her sister, and some na some say, blah, 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 so in the, in the video, she seemed like a lively, happy young girl, which freaks me the fuck out, because like, Jesus Christ, dude. I mean, it's like, it, it, you know, you know, it's not wrong. Like over here, it's like, what happened is anyone's guess. It's called social indoctrination. Yeah, see, exactly. It's like fucking, they raised the kid to, to like this, and the, but it's still wrong, obviously. So crime was committed. Now the dad, uh, Kenneth, I'm not going to mention the last name, is now in jail. And is it okay if I mention the last names of actual jailed people? Like, what is it that, um, privacy... Privacy claims don't happen if the person's arrested, right? I'm not going to do it just out of pure, well, I shouldn't be respecting somebody like that, but just out of legality's sake, is now in jail, and she is now suing anybody who downloaded her videos. Oh, okay, yeah, oh, oh early 2000s. So, yeah, she's old as fuck at this point. She's older. She's a full adult at this point. Vicky is. Um, uh, Vicky isn't total alias, by the way, but yeah, she's old. So overview, you got Kenneth, the dad, who's the producer. Studio is obviously not attributed. Uh, known series, god damn, dude, is Vicky, and then there's no title to it. Early 2000, she is a current status as an adult and outspoken advocate against uh, child pornography, which is a very fucking good thing. Jesus Christ, you know, most people who would be in this situation probably end up being really fucked up, and that's not to discount the situation, but Jesus Christ, man, fuck. Now, description over here, this is the one that actually details what really happens. Uh, Vicky was a CP star in the early 2000s when her father began a sexual relationship videotaped and shared them with other fellow pedophiles. So you know those sites that we uh, that I showed you? Not, like, show, but I told you about the gift box exchange and things like that? Yeah, that's where, like, most people share this kind of stuff. But they also share it on P2P networks, which would be, like, LimeWire and Kaza. Kaza, I don't know how many people, like, remember that shit, but LimeWire was, like, one of the biggest P2P networks ever. Like, it was so bad that you could download, like, the pro version just using regular LimeWire. And Usenet, uh, which is pretty similar. Kali is uh, who many pedophiles are introduced to very early on in their quest. Uh, videos have become ubiquitous in the community. Uh, I don't know anything about that, really, because I've never, you know, never really been in the child pornography community, God forbid. So that's uh, that's fucking news to me, dude. But apparently, that's this is the most popular series that exists. Relationship began when she was nine, stopped when she was 11. She asked him to stop, and he complied. Okay, all right. Well, that ended off pretty fucking decent, Jesus Christ. Um, wow, motherfucker. The police were soon involved, and Kenneth, who was a former police officer and bodybuilder... Oh, God. See, that's fucked up, because, like, the reason why he probably wouldn't be caught is because he knows exactly what the other cops are looking for as well. Um, fled the United States and ended up in China... So after that, for Kenneth, an international manhunt was launched, but when he was found in China, the authorities could not arrest him. Tracking his girlfriend, they used her to find him. 
and he was finally caught in Hong Kong when on his way to go on holiday. He was extradited to the United States, and after a plea deal... Is that possible? Wait. In the 2000s, Hong Kong was... Hong Kong might not have been a part of China. It was, like, British-controlled. Maybe extradition was fine, but anyways. He was extradited to the United States, and after a plea deal, he was sentenced to 50 years on federal charges, and will most likely never leave prison alive. Yeah, because... It's not only if you go to prison, but, like, the fucked up thing is a lot of correctional facility officers. I, I, I mean, it's your perception of how fucked up it is, but they'll leak the information out. And then the other prisoners, like, if you don't know, like, in prison, uh, if, you're a, if you're a child molester, like, you're on the fucking bottom rung of society over there. They will fuck you up, dude. They will... They, they will kill you out there, motherfucker. Prison is not good times. You might have went to an actual, like, special prison just for them. But even then, I, I guess, I don't know, I, I'm afraid, it's psycho, dude. A law was enacted in the United States allowing victims of child abuse to sue those convicted of downloading their images. So, yeah, her lawyers are pursuing. She's uh, made over a million bucks so far, but that's apparently conjecture. She, oh, that's fucking interesting. God damn. She actually did get a uh, bachelor's degree. So fair enough, you know, she's an outspoken advocate in what she does. And, you know, God bless you made some fucking money out of suing some sick fucks who were masturbating to a fucking girl not even past the age of 10, Jesus Christ. But, ladies and gentlemen, this is a sad, but at least a tale ends with a good ending over here. I mean, as good as it can get. Uh, perpetrators in jail, even though he escaped to a country where it's, to be honest, pretty fucking difficult to get out by extradition purposes. I mean, you gotta be a big fucking country to get somebody out of China or even try to. Um, but I mean, if he had went to Japan or something or like, um, Russia, he would, he, he'd be home free. Uh, he was extradited, sent back to the United States, put into prison where he is getting his asshole enlarged by our resident friend Bubba. So ladies and gentlemen, um, interesting stuff over here. Uh, I know it's pretty dark material, but sometimes it's nice to look at the whole spectrum as a thing. Let's go to something a little more positive um, and something that doesn't need to have an amazing or try to have an amazing ending to begin with. Let's, let's go somewhere else. Man, do I just love the end times forecaster. January 17, 2018. Dude, this is a fucking fresh goddamn page, man. So they've got, uh, they've got the ever lovely, uh, ability. They got World War Three. that almost happened. Pet Goat 2. All right, so let's let's look at World War Three, ladies and gentlemen. Let's look at how the world ends. Mm. World War Three, did it almost happen? <laughs> I don't know. Several alternative news sites are reporting that the missile alert for Hawaii was no accident, and there was actually a missile that was launched from a sub, but that it was shot down and the sub was destroyed. Motherfucker, if that happened, dude, we would not, dude. That would be the start of World War Three, right there. Just saying, dude, we'd have a fucking. Mm. Let's go. All right, no, I'm not saying it happened or did happen, just informing you of what is being reported. Okay, so I like the fact that this site already, it, it's fucking normal. You know, it, it's it's not like, uh, it's it's not, it's not really opinionated, I guess you could say. It's just factual reportings. Some of these sources are blaming the presumed attack on Israel or Germany. Oh, hell of two countries to pick together. Huh? I guess if it did actually happen, we may never know. But there were many nations with submarines capable of launching a nuke besides Israel, Germany, including Russia, China, and even North Korea. That's a fucking popular meme lately, dude. I won't fuck with no North Koreans, man. Those guys got tiny dick syndrome, and they, they got they got their shit to prove it, let me tell you. If this report is true, then I would conclude that World War III almost began. Let me remind you that if one five fifteenth was the start date for the 70th, the last seven years then seals 1 to 4, which will include World War III, and the worldwide economic collapse will occur between now and 6 18, 18. Okay, come on, man. Dude, I just... I just <laughs> Come on, it just paid off some things. You're going to tell me the economy is going to fucking collapse at 6, 18, 18? Fuck you, dude. At least it's not like a specific date or some shit. Wait, what is this? Proving the Blood Moon Rapture? Well, I mean, when you write things in Comic Sans, they don't really exactly prove to be the most legitimate looking of sources. But damn it, man. Are we at this point in time? Are the Red Horse of World War Three and the other horses of the apocalypse ready to ride? In pondering these questions, the infamous... 
I Pet Goat 2 film has been brought to, I've never heard of it, has been brought to the forefront of my mind. Here are a few observations of the film relating to our present situation. Notice the shot of Obama. He is sweating. Oh, God. Oh, fucking kill me, dude. Honest to God. Dude, Jesus Christ. It's like, a, it's, like, it's like somebody watching some fucking dirty-ass hentai and saying, Ah, that's Cthulhu! God, no. Notice the shot of Obama. That is a phrase that means that someone is close to for being caught for crimes that they have done. It is rumored that President Trump is going after him and others. See, the shot proves nothing. You could be lifting some mad weights and just fucking going out in style, man. Jesus. All right. In the next scene, they show the Psalm 23 Donald graffiti. As stated in the previous post, I believe this may mean that they are planning to try and take President Trump out as depicted in a Simpsons episode. Oh, my fucking God, dude. Oh, my fucking God. That's like reaching, motherfucker. That is reaching. Okay, well, they got Donald Trump over there in the, in the, in the fucking coffin. Donald has a gematria of 119. I Pet Goat 2 has a gematria of 666. In regards to 119, it is a backwards 911. Oh, no, dude. Come on. Come on. I just said you were reasonable. Now you're just reversing the fuck. What is a gematria? And 119.18 is when the USA government is supposed to run out of money. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? That's tomorrow, dude. Is the U.S. out of cash? Is supposed to run out of money, and one eighteen eighteen is when the Yuan Petro system is supposed to go live. Well, I don't think the Yuan Petro system is apparently alive. Obama saying bye bye Miss American Pie and the words, "This will be the day I die." On one eighteen oh nine, at the We Are One concert of the Lincoln Memorial. If I wonder if there is a connection between in those facts, will one eighteen eighteen be bye bye Miss America's Pie? Because what the Petro might eventually do to the USA. Or will it be the day of the death of a prominent person? Oh, God, this is like, this is so fucking, st God, what am I watching? What am I looking at, dude? And we got like fucking pick RMA. Is that a ship? What the fuck? What is this? It looks scary as fuck, dude. Now they're, now they're linking like Hurricane Harvey and like Hillary and shit and arrested and put an ankle boot on her. I don't fucking know, dude. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go around over here real quick. What is this? Here are fish jumping into the false Christ boat. They are sheep sheed, and there is a sheep sheed bay, sheep's head, sheep's head, in Brooklyn, New York. Here's the destruction of the Statue of Liberty. Again, a New York City connect. Again, dude, it's always fucking New York City. It's Tokyo that gets the goddamn giant lizards attacking it. It's New York City that gets fucking Al Qaeda like hot and wet and bothered, dude. God damn you! I I was mentioning Al Qaeda. It's fucking Bin Laden. Oh my fucking god! Holy shit! Oh my fucking god, I don't know what to say, dude. Is that Grim Fandango? What the fuck? The rapture will not occur until after Seal 6 is open. Scripture is very clear. One day, and maybe soon, America will wake up and World War III will be here. Scripture predicts it, and Scripture cannot be broken. And right on the roofs of the red horse will be the black horse and the worldwide financial collapse. This will... The most important consideration is not when for it will happen, but the most important consideration is, are you praying, watching, and prepping? Man, if the world ends, the world ends. I had a good fucking time, dude. What can I say, man? Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Now we're on to, like, blue moons. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't fucking know what to say, man. Goddamn. The end times are knocking on the door, and so is Jesus. He wants to save you. Will you let him in? Find out what you must do to be saved here. Oh, well, let's find out what to do to be saved here. Boy, it's opening the site, man. It's going to give me the one stop. Oh, we're sinners. We deserve hell. Jesus died for the sins. We must receive Christ by faith. God damn, dude. Jeez. So, man, I feel so depressed sometimes. So I got to buy a book. Mr. Frederick presents a proof showing why the rapture will not occur until the moon is turned to blood on the very special day. Oh, jeez, man. Chapter 5, The Proof. Okay, I don't... Please, please don't have any religious turf battles in the comment sections, ladies and gentlemen. Um... My opinions do not deride from this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back out. Um, if the world ends, the world ends. But uh, hey, just be a good person. All right, that's all I can really say. No matter, no matter what you believe in, just, 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 just be a good person. Don't be a piece of shit. Be a good person and uh, damn, dude. <laughs>
can't believe this is the most conspiracy of all the websites, dude. 9-11-119. God damn. I, I literally started off by saying you were great. You didn't. Oh, God. I walked in full dick and I got fucked instead. Oh, my Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, that was another episode of Deep Web Browsing, Dark Web Browsing, Dank Web Browsing. We've seen some interesting stuff today, some dark stuff, some really cutesy stuff. But I have some stuff saved for next week, ladies and gentlemen, that I know you're really, really gonna like. But uh, as next week approaches and my mind is gonna be consumed with the new Monster Hunter World that's coming out, I uh, bid you farewell for this week, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have an amazing Sunday. I hope you liked it. I hope you uh, will check out the Petscop art, by the way which uh, we definitely saw in this week's <laughs> fucking episode. But ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like it, dislike it. Let us know when we can change for this uh, series, what we can add, what we can change. Keep it fresher and more appealing to you. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.